In today's Writer's Corner live show, we're going to be talking to Miranda O oh about her book, Just Breathe, Chin Up, Tits Out. So stay with us. We'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> If you're just joining us, welcome to the Writer's Corner live show where we elevate engagement and relationships through the power of live video. I'm your host, Bridgette Lambanda from Cape Town in South Africa, and today's stream is made possible by StreamYard, Creative Edge, and BeLive Media, helping you brand yourself better with video. If you want to know when we go live, then please go ahead and follow us on Facebook, and over on YouTube, please click on the subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when we're live there too. We are live today on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and also on Amazon Live. So wherever you are watching us, a hearty, warm welcome to you and thank you for, for joining us. In today's show, we're going to be talking to Miranda O oh about her book, Just Breathe, Chin Up, Tits Out. But let me first say hello to my amazing um, friend and co-host, Mary Elizabeth Jackson. She's a special needs and disabilities advocate and also the award-winning author of the Poolicious children's book series. Um, so if you've got little ones at home between the ages of zero and about seven or eight, go and have a look at the Poolicious series. Um, those books are available on her website maryejackson.com and um, they're also available on Amazon. So let me say a hearty warm welcome to my co-host Mary. Mary, welcome to the show. How are you today? I am awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the introduction and we are we're so excited to be here on Amazon Live and um, all the platforms that we are on. We love uh, to connect with people and share authors, and we're super excited to share Miranda. She is an absolutely amazing person. We'll have to ask her where she came up with her title because it is a very interesting title. I'm sure she gets asked that a lot, so we don't want to be cliche because we have lots of questions for her. But I can't wait to have her on. And she's celebrating a new addition to her family. And um, she has, with her friend Jenna, she has an, a really great show on, um, we're going to let her talk about it. She's a great host and hostess because they, they she, her, she and her friend host together. I got to be on their show and they do an amazing job, but I want her to talk all about that. So we need to bring her on. Yes, absolutely. So for those of you who don't know Miranda or hasn't um, seen any of her books yet, um, Miranda is known by her friends as the storyteller um, okay. who, loves, who loves recapping crazy life stories and situations. And I guess that's one of the reasons she is such a great and fantastic author. So she's got three books out. Um, the, one, the first one is Remember No, what, no Matter What. Um, chin up tits out. The second one is when all else fails, chin up tits out. And today <laughs> we're talking about her latest release, which is just breathe. And my goodness, with everything that's been going on with COVID and everything else that goes along with it, I think we all just need to breathe and why today's title um, is, is a great one. So shall we invite her onto the show? Yes, I was thinking her title is perfect for today because it is it's like the prescription everyone needs, right? Absolutely, absolutely. In this crazy world that we've got right now, um, it's it's one of the things we have to tell ourselves every single day. Just breathe. So let's get Miranda on the show, shall we? <laughs> yep.
Miranda, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you with us today. Thanks for joining us. We know that life's a little bit different and a little bit more challenging because you've welcomed the new addition to your family. So congratulations Thank on you. the Thank birth you. of your little one. Thank um, you. And welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Like I was telling you guys before we went live, this is my first interview post birth and it's been a month today. So what a way to celebrate that I've survived three months and that my child is still alive. Or sorry, in a month. <laughs> yes, right, right. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done anything so bad. I haven't broke her yet. Uh, <laughs> I know it's like it's like when they're first born, like you go, here. here. Yeah. You're yeah. so afraid you're gonna like drop and you know, it's so <sighs> fragile and you're just so terrified till you sit down and then you're like, they're just like, okay. And then yes. we do what your book says. We can breathe. We okay. We can breathe. Yes. She's exactly. not going. She can't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. She can't move. I remember the first day when we were leaving the hospital. I was trying to put clothes on her, and oh. she uh, I didn't have clothes on before, like their first twenty four hours in the hospital, just to diaper and swaddle her. And so I'm like trying to put her arm through this little snuggly onesie thingy, and she's crying, and I'm like, don't cry, don't cry don't cry. And my partner's like, it's fine. She's like, she's a little rubbery. You're not going to break her right now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you're fine. You know? And then a couple days later, I'm like, okay, we got, we got this. And I know. you know, a month later you're like, okay, so I've been puked on, pooped on. I'm sleep deprived. I don't know if I've washed my hair. Don't remember when I washed my hair, but like, Hey, you smile at me. And so that, that just solves all, all the world's problems. So um, you, um, you smell like a mixture of like formula and breast milk yeah. and not bathing. You have this smell about you. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I have managed to shower. Whether or not I get like a full shower is, you know, the question. Um, and luckily my parents do live about a, a minute drive away. Thank gosh, like they live so yeah. close and they have a hot tub. So the odd time I'll just be like, hey, are you guys busy at home? They work from home. Luckily they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, too busy for your granddaughter. They're like, never. I'm like, great. Here's your kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go sit in the hot tub. I need 20 minutes. And they're like, right. sure, take your time. And I'm like, yes. This is <laughs> don't rush. Yeah, don't don't rush. You're like, you want to go use our steam shower? I'm like, yeah, I do. And can you put champagne in the steam shower? Can I just, <laughs> like, uh -huh. I'll see you in two hours. Thank you. Right. It's like the spa that lives a minute away from me. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Awesome. So I, I've been really quite blessed with having them so close. Um and, and I mean, we see each other every day. We saw each other a bunch before baby, but now it's like, it's even more so. And it's kind of cool bringing a new one into your life and being in a place where your family gets even more closer. And, and so we were really, really blessed in that sense. So I'm up in Canada actually, and we just had a big snowstorm and it's like April. So wow. that's not normal, but I mean, every now and then it happens. So um, we're smack dab in the prairies and my partner got stuck on in a snow ditch or a snow drift, sorry, on the way to work last night. <laughs> he was like, I'm stuck. I'm like, call my dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help you. It's 11 o'clock at night. Um, and, and yeah, like it, it, life is pretty grand up here outside of, you know, the COVID craziness. Um, and it's pretty cool because a, a lot of my, not a lot of my story, but a big chunk of my story with Chin Up Tits Out has to do with um, there, there's this little piece of South Africa in there. So it's mm. actually really cool to have the opportunity to talk with you today because I haven't myself been to Cape Town, but I did live in Pretoria for a little while and out in Richards Bay. So that was kind of, it's a, a little bit of a flashback listening to your accent of like, oh, it's like a home away from home. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know my, I can, I can listen to Virginia read the menu. I loved, I, I know she can just read the menu or directions on the medicine bottle. <laughs> right, like why can't the on hold voices sound like you? It's not right. like the automated robotic voices. <laughs> yeah, right. Hello, I, yeah. I I I call her Dame. I I think that should be her name. So you know, I just it's funny because Americans. I mean, you're Canadian and you guys have a great accent too. But Americans, I, you know, there are different spots. The the accents are cool, but I'm pretty neutral, so mine's really boring. So I love her accent. You know, I'm like oh. 
hey, somebody sounds so cool, you know? Right, right. Oh, I remember the first time I heard it, I was like, I'm sorry, I can't figure out where you're from. Are you British? Are you Australian? Are you like German Dutch? Like, are you a combination of it all? And then you get the, no, I'm South African. And you're like, oh, my bad. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> you, Miranda, you said that just like a South African, may I add? Oh, you know what? I I actually I was standing in line at an airport. I think it was I think she combined her South African and her Canadian together. Oh, it it's it comes out. I was standing and and these this couple started speaking Afrikaans to me. And I answered in English because I understood at the time. And they're like, Whoa, who are you? And I'm like, I'm not Afrikaans. At the time, I was married to one, so I, I and I had lived out there for a few months. So I had and I watched. There's a soap opera that I watched every day that had which one? Videos. Which one? I can't remember what it was called. If I if I heard the name, I I might remember, but it was English and Afrikaans, and then the it all the had subtitles. To, yeah, it yeah. had subtitles. So that's how I learned to understand um speaking it was a different story i knew all the bad words i knew how to say please and thank you and like i love you and like that was that was my the extent of my afrikaans um but that was like uh, oh my goodness over 10 10 10 years over 10 years ago now so like it was a long long time ago that i was immersed but yeah people are like oh you're not afrikaans i'm like no <laughs> so you're not south african i'm like i'm canadian man like hey yeah, and they're you, like no <laughs> and you sound also like you could pull off some north and south dakota oh yeah oh yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? North Dakota was our vacation spot growing up as kids because my parents were like, we were broke. We couldn't afford to go anywhere. And North Dakota is like a two and a half hour drive south of Manitoba where we are. And so we would take vacations to a hotel and go shopping because at that point it was way easier like better to go shopping in the u.s now with the markets in the world it's crazy and it's not so much great bang for your buck but we would go for like a long weekend go play in the water park in our hotel and then go shopping at all the stores that canada doesn't have and come home with the new school wardrobe and my parents would buy all the Christmas stuff for us at that point. It's crazy. <laughs> or cheap booze. I learned that when I was 18 too, except I was not legal in the States. So I would sit in the car and give my parents money and be like, can you go buy me booze, please? <laughs> <laughs> We stopped doing this for you in Canada, and now we have to do this for you in the States. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. That's, that's, Miranda, that's a story right there. It is. I'm dying to ask you, how did you come up with the title for this series? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, people's like, because Mary couldn't stop laughing. You know, I was like, she's going to laugh, and that's exactly what happened. She just, But just you know, watching like, her say the word. <laughs> tits i'm like okay that's the dame saying the word but right. i'm like i can't wait to hear this right oh it made me giggle too i had i couldn't push back my smile so i, I and i have talked about my family being so close and 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 that's really where it came from was was it was kind of like a a mantra in in my child not my childhood but my childhood it always was stand up tall hold your shoulders you know put your shoulders back hold your head held high be proud be confident now there are going to be times in our life where we aren't confident and inside we are a disaster like a duck on the water on the surface we're super calm but underneath our little feet are going a million miles a minute and so that's kind of where it came from. And then it moved and it transitioned to this chin up tits out. When I was in my teenage years at some point, I might have been like 16 or 17, and I was bucking for a compliment. You know, I was probably whining and hormonal. And, you know, my, I was looking for my mom to like boost me up. And my mom was like, oh, just chin up, tits out, go do what you need to do and, <laughs> and kick butt at it. And, um, <laughs> And I, we giggled at it. And, and you know what? Honestly, I didn't even intend for the title of the series to be that. It was when I had gotten the first um, book back from my editor. And I didn't have a title. I just knew I had a book. And it came back from the editor. And, 
And I kept reading. I hadn't read it for a couple months. You know how it goes, right? Mm -hmm. And and then all of a sudden, I see this chin up, tits out, chin up, tits out, chin up, tits out. The, the main character kept coaching herself every single time. Life smacked her down to stand up tall, chin up, tits out, be confident, and move forward, even though inside you don't feel that way. And I'm like, man, this is catchy, and it's and <laughs> yeah, right. And, and it, <laughs> yes. People think it's provocative and it could be, yes, but it's not meant to be, but it's it's catchy and people, you know, as much as we tell them not to judge a book by its cover, we do. And so I'm like, man, this from a marketing point of view might be Brilliant. a really good idea. And that is, it It catches people's eyes. Like, um, I remember in one of the book stores that I was doing a signing at, there was my books at the front of the bookstore, Chin Up, Tits Out, and right behind me there was this big uh display for food porn or like <laughs> garden porn or something like that and this mom came and got so mad at me because of the title of my book and i'm just like but but what about these guys what about yeah and i'm like they ain't even here like what and she just goes so she's like covering her son's eyes i'm like honey if you think you're gonna stop your kid from figuring out what all these words are you ain't got nothing so yeah now my my kid is a month old i'm like yes chin up tits out girl and she's just like sitting there like a potato looking at me I'm you like, go yeah you go, we're girl. Them young. And, I brought, and i brought the duck yes yeah <laughs> I brought I brought the duck. Oh my <laughs> god, that's <laughs> hilarious! <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. Oh so my yeah, god, that's that's where it came from. It oh, came okay. so from a little Miranda, motivation from my family. Miranda, so there's someone on Amazon Live yeah. who's now asking, "What is chin? What is chin up to tat? So just a quick run through again. Yes, chin up tits out is a life mantra, a daily mantra, a little coaching on the inner self that you, no matter how you feel, you just got to chin up tits out and take a step forward in life, especially these days, right? Um, that's that's short, sweet, and simple. I could keep going on and on and on. It's another that's version good. of put on your big girl panties. Yeah, or yes. fish it till you make yes. it. Like, yeah, fake it you make it, right? right. Yes. So suck it up, buttercup. Exactly. Yeah, suck it up, buttercup. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I like that one. I like that one. Remember, who was the guy we had on the show that said, um, suck it up by the cup? It was the guy with, um, uh, oh, my goodness, I forgot his name now. But he also lived with major, he lives with major life-threatening health challenges. Yeah. And at the end of the show, we sort of were trying to, to, to sum up, the, you know, his experiences and how he's lived his life. Um, not being so focused on 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 his life threatening disease, mm -hmm. but em on empowering people, and that's basically what he was saying. Um, you know, chin up buttercup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah suck exactly. it up buttercup. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, tell everybody about. So you're not only just a, you're you're an author now. You're a mom because you can add that to your resume, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, you can write writing mom, your hashtags, all that stuff. And then you are also a podcaster. Yes. So you know, tell everybody because you guys are on uh, authors on air. Yep. which is a whole network. Mm -hmm. um, so for anybody who doesn't know what Authors on Air is, you know, and your Quill and Ink. Mm -hmm. So tell everybody about that a little bit. Yeah, little for bit sure. Yeah. So we we do something very similar to you. Jenna and I, actually, we've never met in person. We're both Canadian authors. We're a couple provinces apart. And um, we... We are both represented by Mickey Mickelson at Creative Edge Publicity. Woo -woo -woo. And, right, Mickey's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. And he kind of all and told us, like, I have this opportunity. I think you guys are going to do great with it. You have both kind of expressed interest in, in expanding your, your reach in the literary industry. And this is an opportunity. And we're like, yeah, let's do this. And we both had no idea what we were doing. And so we started just over a year ago. It's actually closer to a year and a half now. And we interview authors from around the world. We get to know them. We get to, it, it's kind of cool because Jen and I are very, very different. We're like the oil and vinegar that you dip your bread in before a dinner. It's like the best thing, but we don't mix, but we do mix in some weird way. Um, and she is all about the writing process and building stories. And I'm all about 
who are you as a person? Like you could be a best-selling author, you could be an award-winning author, but I want to get to know who you are as a human being to make you relatable. So anybody that's starting out writing or has the aspirations to write, or maybe is looking for a new author to follow now has an opportunity to be relatable to you. And I don't know about you, but I love reading books from authors that I know more of. And, oh, sure. Right. It just it connects you on a whole other level of, right. of the story, because now you're not only immersed in the story, but you're trying to figure out what that writer was thinking about. Well, the backstory is really cool because we yeah. like to always find out the backstory like right. we're doing with you. And so then it makes that book just mean so much more. And then you're going to go and recommend it as well to other people. Exactly. Yeah. And you exactly. guys do a great job on your show. Your personalities mix really well. You guys, uh, you guys, everything flows. I had a really great time with you all. You make people feel very special. So we we have so so much fun and both of us like like we were both like i said we're very different she's all about like the research and she does all that back end stuff and then i'm all about the technical stuff and the you know the production of the podcast and so our partnership works really really well together so i have to give mickey a shout out because he was the one that put that partnership together and he's like here you two are going to be best friends and we're like oh okay cool hi nice to meet you virtually <laughs> yeah and and, and so the one day that we actually get to meet each other will be so exciting. Um, but for now, we we meet on video every week and we inter we interview new authors. And it's just, it's fantastic. Like you, you two, you guys are from opposite ends of the world. I, and we have a different, different, co different continents we live. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. have never met in person, mm -hmm. but we're like family. And our relationship works like what yours does. You know, Brigetti has the things that she does and I have the things that I do. And it all comes together to make this show. And so we, you know, we try to take our talents like you guys are and put it where it works. And then that, you know, so then we're doing what, what we like and what we feel comfortable with and what we're, you know, what we can do well at. And it just all comes together kind of like an Oreo cookie, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly like the Oreo cookie. I wouldn't know which one I want to be though. Do you want to be the ice cream or do you want to be the chocolate? I know. I know. It would be a really hard decision. <laughs> or, pe or you be peanut butter and jelly. Oh, yes. I, I, yeah, I'm, there I'm we all go. about the peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the red. <laughs> Miranda, tell us a little bit about, you know, you've you've now, your previous two books were pre-COVID, right? Yes. And so the third one is a COVID book for want of a better description. Yeah. Yeah. It literally came out two weeks before we were in lockdown. So oh. it's been a very different approach to marketing the book and i mean cool things you're doing interviews virtually all the time anyways but i definitely miss that aspect of going into the stores and shaking hands and kissing babies as they say it's like like i would stand in the front of the bookstore and the managers were like we didn't hire a greeter today because we know that you're going to greet every single person that walks into the store i'm like heck yes i am i'm like you <laughs> make eye contact with me Oh, you're sucked in. And yeah. so, you know, like I sit at the front of the bookstore and I'm like, hi, welcome to such and such bookstore. How are you today? Like, what brings you in? And they're like, why do you do that? I'm like, well, why not? Like, right. to me, it's all about relationships and connection. And whether or not that person is looking for a book that my book will suit them or something that's, that won't, that, that is not mine. That's okay. I get to talk to somebody new and, and, you know, maybe their sister or their cousin or their mother it would be interested in the book. And like, I can't tell you how many books I've sold to people that weren't looking to buy my book, but ended up buying my book simply because I just said hello to them. Now, well, that's the thing. That's a, it's yeah. all about relationships. Um, mm -hmm. It's not about selling per se because people get yeah. people nobody wants to be sold to nope. but who doesn't want to make a new friend <laughs> exactly you know exactly and it's so funny because it like flashback gosh 15 years ago i i owned a company doing airbrush tattoos so they were like the spray on temporary tattoos that we do at carnivals and festivals and and think about it when you go to a carnival or a festival the last thing you're looking for is to drop 20 30 dollars on a temporary tattoo that's going to wash off in anywhere from a day to a week um but 
so, and I had staff to pay. I had entrance fees to pay for. I was 18 when I bought the business and I was like, there is no way I'm making this flop. So we would stand at the front of our booth and every single person that walked by, we would smile and say hello to and greet. And you would not believe either people with a really, you know, one of those, those, um, resting, not very happy faces, um, or com people that are completely zoned out and you catch their attention and then they smile and they'll walk past you maybe five minutes later again and take a look at your booth, take a look at what you do and you say hi to them again. And, you know, maybe they come in the second time or they come in the third time. It's, it, it was all about connecting with humans. There's tens of thousands of people that come to a festival, um, if not hundreds of thousands that come to a festival within a week or so. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot of stimulation that's going on. There's lots of lights, noises, this, that, and we had to stick out in order to make money. And that was, that was our philosophy. Any single person that walked by, we said hello to, and that would draw people in. And then at some point, you know, if we had a crowd, it would draw an even bigger crowd. And so that was this whole mentality that when I did and market my books and, and do signings was to be that, that carny lifestyle still to, to maintain it, to just say, Hey, like, I want to say hi to everybody. I want to make friends with everybody. And now, like, again, 15 years later, I still have connections from people that I tattooed year after year after <laughs> year. You know, I watched kids grow up and get their driver's license. I did it for 10 years. So it's like, you know, every year this kid comes back and they're like a foot taller. I'm like, how is this happening? Like, I'm not getting older. How are you getting older? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, we need to goodness. have you and we need to have you and Jenna on. We should do a foursome. That would be a lot of fun, Bridgetti, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Miranda, tell us very quickly, we, we're at the top of the, I can't believe 30 minutes are gone. <laughs> so we know that we, your books are available on um, on Amazon. Yeah. But where else can people, how can people connect with you is what I want to say. Yeah, for sure. You can connect with me on Facebook, on Instagram or Twitter. Hashtag chin up tits out is the easiest way. Or you can just type in Miranda O, that's O-H. And I'm on on all of those platforms. I share my writing journey a lot on Instagram and Facebook. So you get to see what's coming next and down the pipeline for me, which I'm really excited about my next series. So um, I would love to connect with you. Please hop on in and slide into my DMs as they say. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Miranda, thank you so much. It was lovely, lovely, lovely having you on the show today. Thank and you. Um, wishing you so much um, for blessings for the journey into, into motherhood as you've just gotten. You're just a month into motherhood and we wish you so well. We wish you well. And we'd love to have you back again. I would love to be back. I would love to be back. Anytime the invitation, I'm I'm down. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Continue to survive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I can't wait. I think you gotta write about you gotta write about the funnies of motherhood. Like I used to put posts out and stuff, but I haven't Absolutely. really ever written about it. But man, I mean, and I my third child is is a boy. So he is totally different than the girls and the conversation. We've got to say good we've got to say goodbye, unfortunately, Hi. to interrupt you. So thanks everyone for watching. Remember to write good stuff and be inspired one conversation at a time. <laughs>